this is a really good book, uh, Stories at Work, right? Um, so uh, it's it's a very good book about telling you about how to how to tell stories to drive a point across, mm-hmm. right? Um, it can be business values. It could be you know lessons learned. So Stories at Work. It's it's a Indian author. I, his okay. name is Indranil Chakraborty. So <laughs> okay, so, okay. You might know him. Yeah, I might know him because he's Bengali, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think everyone should have a mentor around them to actually, you know, not necessarily someone who's just a teacher, but someone who's probably one step ahead in, in the game. So do you have that as well? Like, I know you are a mentor to a lot of people, but then do you follow, uh, are you always just read, reading up Mr. Chakraborty's books or uh, you also have <laughs> a mentor behind you? Like, I do. I have a, I have a few mentors. Like, in fact, I have a mentor for business. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, I have a mentor for uh, you know basically uh, social media you know um, just someone yeah. who who shares with me how she does things. I have different mentors for different different uh, aspects. Yeah, well. I think that's so, very essential to yeah. have uh, that. I mean, someone uh, like a soundboard, right? So yeah. Welcome to another episode of Akla Solo Ray. Um, so in the last few weeks, we already had a bunch of content creators come and speak about their experiences in doing the projects that they did and, you know, give some perspective on how to get started in creating that content. But today, uh, we'll take a step back and at a broader level, we'll understand on uh, what's actually required uh, to actually put this content out nicely. Uh, and that's basically branding, right? So at the end of the day, your content is nothing without a solid branding around it. So today I have a very special guest, a very dear friend of mine, Vivek Iyani. Uh, he's a millennial mentor and he has authored a book on empowering millennials. So he really understands uh, this millennial generation uh, very well. Hello. 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 Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> you seem to be locked down, man. Like you're you're cramped up in your room. <laughs> <laughs> this is my world. This is my universe. This is yeah. Your, yeah, yeah. I have seen that when when we were in Malaysia, like you were like working, man. Like on yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you you're actually writing your second book now, right? So, yeah, um, I am. it's due on seventh. Actually, I I had to get an extension because I wasn't finishing it up. So. Okay. Do you on the second? Yeah. Okay. How is it different? Because your first book is about empowering millennials in the workplace. If I'm not wrong, uh, how is this? Uh, yeah. Huh? Uh, the first one is not about empowering them in the workplace. The first one is empowering the, uh, the millennials who are going through quarter life crisis, which means they don't mm-hmm. really know what they want in life. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't like the job that they have, uh, <laughs> but at the same time, they don't know what job they want to be in, or you know, yeah. you know, follow your passion and. And all of those things, yeah. So that book. I think, is I think we'll address that because that's something we we, we should address today on this whole mm-hmm. quarter life crisis uh, yeah. topic. But yeah, so uh, but you also uh, wrote about workplace, right? Didn't I did hint about it because it's part of the conversation. You have it was to supposed to be part two, if I'm not wrong. So so the the book that I'm writing now is more for the managers. It's about engaging millennials at the workplace. Uh, on the topic of engaging millennials. Um, so basically, uh, I'm also an author as well. I've written the book Empowering Millennials, as you mentioned. And I am, I've am i been featured on TV as well, like Channel News Asia, Muscle, yeah. um, you know, and newspapers, magazines. Yeah. So the whole, the whole uh, journey for me has been going from someone who used to do training in schools yeah. with children who are between the ages of 7 to 17, uh, teenagers as well. Uh, to becoming someone who specialized in a young generation focusing on the corporate market uh, so that I can, you know, I can engage with director level people, C-level people um, and, you know, these top leaders of organizations to help them with their strategies in, in understanding the younger generation so that you okay. know, they stay longer, stay more engaged at the workplace. So that's where I'm at right now. Okay. Okay. And what, what, what do you think, like, I mean, you know, having uh, gone through this, like, uh, what do you think is the biggest uh, 
sort of challenge for the millennial generation? So I guess the biggest challenge for millennials typically tend to be the fact that they don't have any work experience um, when they're starting out. Um, even at the workplace, when you are starting out, people tend to see you as uh, a green horn, someone who doesn't have enough experience. You may have a lot of ideas, but you don't know how the real workings of the world is. That's typically how the older generations will view uh, the younger generation. It's always been there, right? It's not just for millennials. It's been there for the generations before as well. So the, the, that's the challenge. And because of that, it leads to a lack of respect. You know, you feel like you're disrespected. You feel like uh, you're not taken seriously. You know, you feel unheard. Your voice is not heard. You know, and um, it's very hard for you to get recognition. That's the biggest challenge for millennials. So typically, you don't get recognized by people who you want to work with. And uh, as a result of that, you either suffer in terms of uh, being selected in the work place or you suffer in terms of not having enough sales and making progress yeah. in your business because you don't have that you don't have that recognition so getting that recognition either uh, from from people from media from uh, brands that's one of the key things you know that's re- evolved yeah. on branding yeah so you have I think, to I think on your- you you uh, nicely brought it into uh, uh, the perspective because uh, yeah so I think the, the challenge would be for someone who's starting out to create their content online would be to find, uh, you know, on, 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 on certain ways on how they can actually brand themselves and yeah. finding, uh, getting that recognition. Like, for example, when I started out uh, in my social media branding journey, I knew it was important, but I didn't exactly know what worked and what didn't work. So um, when I started out, I just started dishing out content on about millennials, right? Like I, I, I said, this is millennials about this. This is the latest things. So I gave a lot of very technical and very um, focused content that wouldn't relate to the average person, especially on social media. If you're on Facebook, you read something about millennials are unhappy at work. If it's not relevant to you, you won't read it, right? Uh, it'll, it'll be relevant to a few people, but because, you know, social media has its algorithms, it only sends out your post to people who actually like it right so if the the like your yeah. close friends your family your mom will like your post <laughs> but <laughs> if the manager doesn't like your post or if they, they don't even get to see your post yeah. in the first place and the reason uh, it, it doesn't work is because you know you have not interested the 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 regular person the the person who, who it's not relatable right it's too technical yeah. and uh, like say you talk about branding, right? Only people who are thinking about branding will engage with the post on branding. But okay. um, if you talk about stories, you can stop, talk about your stories, your journey about uh, being in business, your journey about the challenges you face. And if it's something that the other person has also faced, right? Something yeah. very generic, right? So say the lack of recognition when I started out, uh, you know, in my business, uh, the challenges of, you know, getting people to trust us with, uh, you know, their projects. Uh, these are things that maybe other millennials or other individuals can relate to, right? And th- those kind of stories will then build yeah. up an interest to what you actually do, right? Yeah. And as more and more people like your stories, then they'll be, they'll say, okay, can I maybe work with this person? Or they'll remember you when there's a conversation around millennials, like, there's been so many times where I just talk about my stories and yeah. as a result, people remember I am the millennial guy. And then yeah. when someone talks about millennials, like, oh yeah, do you know this person? This person has okay. written a book about it. Okay. So okay. my interviews have happened. The people, like the producers who found me for the Channel News Asia interview and like even for Penguin Random House that, uh, you know, found me as an author. They found it through people who remembered me because I shared these stories on social media. It's not because I had a connection. I didn't reach out to these people. They reached yeah. out to me. Okay. But I think re- relatability is the key, key word here because... Yeah, you know, you, it has to be relatable. It has to be relevant. To be relatable. And relatable. So how, how did you make that transition? Because you said you were putting out, dishing out content one after the other, you know, on millennials. Yeah. Here, and if people, may, people did not maybe find it uh, interesting enough because it was too niche or it was too technical as you said so uh, yeah how, how did you make it more relatable like you still have to stick to that uh, content right you can't digress and be relatable and talk about something else so yeah so what it, the, 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 whole, yeah. the whole idea is to go 80% on stories and 20% on the niche content so 
I'll talk about regular day-to-day issues like what I what I suffered what, what and try to make all these posts as inspirational as possible because people are not on social media to hear about you complaining. I mean, after a while they just block you <laughs> because it's, it's annoying. But if it's inspirational content, if it's if it's engaging, if it's humorous content uh, that people can relate to, they will they will just like to hear from you and yeah. read your posts. So that that. Uh, 80% has to be human to human interactions based uh, stuff okay. and 20% can be related to like you know you did something with this company or you know you were interviewed but it okay. has to be a very small percentage of the overall post now of yeah. course I didn't suddenly get a realization I had to go for a few causes to you know understand how to do storytelling I have to go for a few causes to understand how to position myself on social media uh, before it started working for me and of course I've done things that didn't work I've paid for causes that didn't work I have also then learned that this is nonsense and then after that you you just correct course along the way you know so how how useful are these courses like uh, would you would you recommend some course like uh, you know, to, to well, um, there, I mean, there are I'm good sure. and bad. I mean, we, I would, I would always say that you know, if you want to go for a cause, um, you know, that means if you if you want to change your behavior, get a coach. But if you just want to learn something, you can always find it on YouTube. If you want to learn how to, if you want knowledge, you can always find uh, find it there. But if you want to change your behavior, like you can learn what to do, like do a YouTube video every day. Right, yeah. you probably know that, but we don't do it, right? Because we don't yeah. have someone who is accountable for it. So, yeah. and and then when things go wrong, you have no one to access to ask questions. So that's where a coach comes in to change the behavior. But uh, if you just want mm. knowledge, you can just always find it. Um, of course, yeah, uh, yeah. to have that specific key knowledge, you need to know who to find, and it also depends on what kind of post you want to put out. You know, some people believe in putting out very, um, very. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, controversial topics, right? That's their that's their personality. Like there are bloggers yeah. out there who <laughs> openly talk uh, talk about their opinions, uh, and they get yeah. a lot of fan following because of people who. But if that's not who you are, that technique yeah. won't work for you. So you really have to find out who, yeah. who you see as a role model, and then model after that. But th- this is great. I mean, uh, you you brought out this eighty twenty rule. I think that that's really interesting because. I see a lot of your uh, Instagram posts. I, I think you're posting every day, right? If I'm not wrong. Yeah. Is, is yeah. that is that a like a genuine like you're trying to do that on purpose, like trying to put out uh, content every day? Is there a, a logic behind it? That's, that's me being productive. So what I've done is I re- already written a book. So whatever you're seeing is basically yeah. a post from my book. So I took my <laughs> book. I re- I already wrote the book. I pass it to a graphic designer. Don't, don't say that. People people won't buy your book now. You will see your post. <laughs> but yeah. how many posts will you read to understand what's in the book? Come on, man. People are just jobless. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I just gave it to this guy who, who very diligently, uh, you know, reads my book chapter by chapter, line by line. Okay. And then he creates a post based on that. So, I don't have to do the work over again. Initially, okay. I struggle with thinking. So, you're, you're, you're not creating the post, Vivek. I mean, the, whatever content I have is already there in the book. So he's just repurposing whatever I have. Okay. Yeah. But I think it, yeah. it comes out really nicely because uh, it looks very uh, fresh and engaging. It's not like just something yeah. you just put up I there. hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's, it's nice. I, I, I see a lot of, uh, not a lot, but I see a few people doing that really well. And I mean, mm. some of them are really uh, verified uh, profiles and stuff, but then... It, it it stands out because the way uh, it's put out that there, there is it shows a lot of effort behind it so that's great yeah yeah, yeah.